School and I want to welcome you here to our to channel WRRS on October 8th, 2021. I'm Caden Stewart. This station prides itself with bringing you the latest intermediate school news. This week we are highlighting the, li the library department. The library is made up of three people. Ms. Han, Mrs. Hahn, the librarian. Ms. Kara Ms. Corrado, library teacher, and Mrs. Wilsey, the library aide. This year, um, this year the Mrs. Hahn and Mrs. Corrado are teaching classes in the library too. Let's go to the library now and find out all the new things about the library. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our new and improved Intermediate School Library. So Mrs. Corretto and I are standing here outside of the library next to our new book drop. So when you come to the library, if you have a book to return, we ask that you just drop it right inside of here before entering the library so that when you go inside, you can pick out your new library books when you go in. And this is what it looks like inside. So you just have to drop it in the slot and then Mrs. Wilsey, Mrs. Corretto, or myself will come out and get your library books that you returned. Take note, we have brand new books that have arrived at our library. These are future giveaway books. We can't wait to get them in. All right, come on inside. Our circulation desk has finally arrived. We have been waiting for weeks and weeks. This is where all of the book magic happens. Mrs. Wilsey will be here ready to check out your newest read. When you check out library books beginning this week, you get to take a raffle ticket. For those of you that used to be here, um, for fifth graders and sixth graders, you'll remember that we do something called the book box. The book box is every time you check out a library book, you fill out a little colored uh, ticket for your grade level. Mrs. Wilsey will explain that when you're checking out and you just put your name on it and put it in the bucket. And then at the end of every month, we do a drawing for second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and for faculty and staff. And you will win something like a couple of books, maybe a book mug or some little poppets because those are super popular. Um, any little thing, it's just a surprise and it's super, super fun. So next we're gonna take you over to the giveaway section. This week we hosted our first book giveaway. It was super exciting for all of our students to be able to have a choice from all of these beautiful titles of two forever books to add to their at-home libraries. We will continue doing that throughout the year. We're hoping for two to three books every month. Free choice to add to your at-home library. And now we're back at our graphic novels section. This is our most popular section of the library. Many children spend a whole bunch of time checking out all the different books that we have here. We have series like Big Night and Dog Man. We have Bad Guys. We have Naruto. We have... My Hero Academia. They might be all checked out. Look at these are all shelves from My Hero Academia and they're all, all but one are checked out which is super exciting and proves how popular this area is. We have some Ghostbusters. We also have some other great graphic novel series. We have a whole bunch of Marvel and um, children are just loving it. So now Mrs. Credo and I are standing here in our makerspace section. So the makerspace is something that we started a couple of years ago and we had to kind of put on pause because of COVID, but it is back and open for business again. Um, for safety purposes, everyone has to hand sanitize before using the different makerspace items, but a makerspace is an opportunity for our students and teachers to work together, collaborate, and be creative in their own unique ways. So some of the things that we have here are some craft supplies, some Legos for building. They are going to ask you questions about what you've read, and sometimes it's really hard to remember everything that was in the book. Hi boys and girls, today we want to wish them and 
a fantastic year too. We hope it goes swimmingly well. We can't let a week go by without a fun fish fact. This week's WRRS picked the anableps because, well, let's hear from some students why. The anableps are sometimes are called the four-eyed fish, but they do not actually have four eyes. Even though they don't have four eyes, their eyes are pretty cool. They have, they are split horizontally into two sections by a band of tissue, which makes it seem they to have four eyes. The, the surfing, the surface dwelling fish makes good use of its feature to see above and below the water at the same time. The anablucks can search for food below the surface and keep an eye on predators above at the same time. Anablucks rarely leave the surface. This fish is even known to leap onto sandbanks and snatch land insects. Anablips are found along the Atlantic coast of Central and South America and around the island of Trinidad. Its favorite habitat consists of river estuaries and surrounding mangrove swamps or swamps with a lot of tree roots where the water where the water is salty with the amount of salt changing with the ebb and the flow of the tide. Watch this video about the anablux. The four-eyed fish has evolved to be the perfect surface dwelling fish. And if you were to see this fish from above, it may look like it has two eyes, but in actual sense, it has four eyes. Each eye is divided horizontally in two halves, with a thin band of tissue separating each eye. So when this fish swims through the water, the bottom half of its eyes submerged, while the top half remains above the surface. And it's not just the position of the eyes that are different, as the upper part of this fish's eyes are adapted to see out of water, and the lower part of the eyes adapted for vision underwater. Each eye has two Two corneas and two pupils, which are linked by a section of the iris. And the four-eyed fish definitely has a daring feeding strategy, but what it chooses to eat normally depends on environmental conditions. As most of its habitat is tidal, what it eats from low to high tide varies. At low tide it seldom forages. This is except during neap tides, where fish carcasses or small quantities of mud are consumed. The four-eyed fish also uses its adapted eyes to hunt terrestrial insects along the shoreline, and the four-eyed fish tends to leap out of the water onto the exposed banks to get at these insects. During high tides, the fish can feed on red macro algae, and this algae grows on the exposed mangrove silt. And while its top eye looks for insects, the bottom part of the eye looks under the water to search for small fish and submerged algae. Do you think an anablep could read two books at a time with their cool eyes, one above the water and one below the water? Just something to think about. I hope that everyone is earning sand dollars for respect, responsibility, and safety. Mrs. Gus Mrs. Gostomsky and Mrs. Fox's second grade class has kicked off this year learning about monarch butterflies. They observe their life cycle and learn about their migration to Mexico. They even learned how to spot milkweed to go caterpillar hunting on the on their own. Great job. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm in the ski club. We go skiing and snowboarding at Swing on Fridays in January and February. It's a lot of fun. You can rent skis or snowboard and we all eat dinner up there too. If you want more info, ask Miss Hazard or Miss Madison. We are going to end our episode with a moment of mindfulness with Mrs. Friedman. Hi everyone, welcome back to Moments of Mindfulness with me, Mrs. Fridman. Today, just real simple breathing exercise for you. I have found that this is really effective if you kind of just need to slow down and recharge and just kind of relax. And it's just a breath in for five seconds, holding it there for five seconds, and then releasing your breath for five seconds. So I will demonstrate it and then you try it and try it throughout your day, try it at night, whenever you feel you need to, okay? And we're gonna just inhale, 
hold it here. And exhale out. Okay, so that's a breath in for five seconds, holding it there for five, and then releasing it for five. Okay, go ahead and try that, and I will see you next time. This brings an end to our broadcast today. Remember to treat others the way you want to be treated. Do what you're supposed to do and keep yourself and others from harm. Okay, say it with me. We are respectful, responsible, and safe. We are Red Raider strong. Good job. Red